Welcome to US Tiji 360, I'm Ginger Chang. Today, we revisit Tiji's Great Love Preschool. One unique aspect about the school is that it is a bilingual school. According to the Associated Press, 66% of children in the world are raised to speak two languages. Being bilingual gives a child a head start in education, but a child needs to be exposed to a different language for at least 30% of their waking hours to become bilingual. Thus, proactive parental involvement is critical in facilitating this, and one such individual is Tom Jin, the principal of Tsuji Academy, New York. Welcome, Principal Jin. Hi, Ginger. Hi, everyone. So besides being a principal, you're a parent yourself. Why did you see the need to have your children be bilingual? Well, as a parent, I always told my daughters that mm -hmm. we are Chinese descendant. Our face shows that learning extra language mm -hmm. could be an advantage for you. Right. Especially in your career exactly. in life. Mm -hmm. Then there's so many Chinese schools out here in New York. Why did you decide to send them to Tiji Academy? That was a great question. Mm -hmm. Uh, indeed, there are a lot of choices in New York. Mm -hmm. The reason we chose Tsuji Academy because Tsuji Academy not only teaches Chinese language, mm -hmm. they also teach the arts of humanity. Right. The teachers in Tsuji Academy are well informed that character education is far more important mm -hmm. than the language itself. That was why I chose Tsuji Academy. Well, like you, parents choose for various reasons why they decide to send their children to a city operated school, which we'll find out in the first segment. So we now go to Southern California. When I became pregnant, I started looking for a good school since the waiting lists are usually very long. I actually had a premonition that we would probably come to this school because the Tsuji Academy has a good environment that puts people's minds at ease. I was woken up by a phone call telling me that my child, Emily, had gotten into the Tsuji Academy. I was so happy that I screamed. I had waited so long and made so many calls. The reason that we weren't sure if she would get in is because Emily wasn't fully potty trained yet. If we missed the window, we wouldn't get in, so I'm really happy that she made it. The reason I came to this school, these schools I should say, from public school is because of the family type culture that it has here. It's what I'm looking for, it's what I really enjoy being around, and it's what I believe in. That's what's good for children. So it is exactly what I expected it to be. It was just a nice, fun family event um, where the children and the community, including parents, come together with teachers to, to a support student. And, and it was wonderful. The children were all enjoying it. The children were the spotlight, but the parents enjoyed it as well, and everyone were, all of them were involved. So it was wonderful. They have a lot of love to the kids. I'm so comfortable to leave my daughter here. First of all, a little um, mixed feeling, you know. Her Japanese is decreasing, but um, I think eventually, not only language, important thing is not only language, um, you know, behave and attitude. So um, I think she'll get all the benefit. My Chinese skill is language also improving a little bit. <laughs> Sayaka's Chinese has improved greatly because she goes to Tsuji's preschool and receives a bilingual education. It has improved the communication she has with her father. The character building curriculum of Tsuji is also based on charity and gives the children a chance to learn from practice and build a strong foundation for their integrity. In preschool, we can't really use lectures as a way of teaching. These young students can't memorize bullet points, but if the students do it by hand, donate to the Bamboo Bank daily, perform the Bamboo Bank sign language song, and listen to master stories, they will remember it when they grow up. So in our preschool, we emphasize learning through hands-on experience, so they can experience Siji's charitable spirit at an early age. The educational philosophy in Tsuji's preschool is mainly focused on cultivating a habit of kindness and a habit of giving and helping others. 
The act of contributing to the Bamboo Bank every morning is a continuation of Tiji's Bamboo Charity Bank philosophy and a habitual act of kindness. This is different from typical morning exercises in other preschools. This is also one of the reasons why many parents are drawn to enroll their children here. This is actually her second school. She was in the first school when she was two years old. A two year plus one month old. She wasn't even potty trained. So, but we kind of have to pick up the school because it's closer. And we didn't search a lot of you know, schools. So we picked the school, but there are a lot of timeouts during the day when I see the school. Just like many other parents before coming to Tsuji, Toshiko had meticulously chosen a school for her daughter Sayaka that was near their home and that emphasizes academics. Sayaka speaks Japanese at home with her mother and Chinese with her father. Coming to a new school where she had to adapt to different languages and environments was a lot of change for a two-year-old to get used to. One day, Toshiko heard a lonely cry in the restroom. It turned out to be her own daughter. I heard my daughter crying in the bathroom one day. <laughs> I parked the car in the school site and I went to shop. I went to do grocery shopping and I came back to my car and then I heard someone crying. So, but after, after hearing one minute and then, I think that's my daughter, and then let me check. And then I kind of peeked you know, through the you know, gap and then my daughter crying. No one was there, so I said, hmm. I know that might be one incident, but um, she was by herself crying in the toilet seat. After seeing her daughter's situation and how Sayaka refused to attend school after having a cold, Toshiko decided to transfer Sayaka out of that school. We didn't like that preschool very much, so we tried other places. Then we heard about Tzu Chi. I really wanted to find a school that was bilingual in Mandarin, so we visited Tzu Chi. We really liked the school. It was all that we had hoped it would be. <laughs> After I, you know, check this, you know, Tsuji, it seems like, you know, staffs are caring and then they don't give a time out and then they focus on the character education, uh, not only Chinese education, but we also look for the bilingual school because um, I, well, I, I speak Japanese, my husband speaks Mandarin to her. But we don't speak, you know, we don't encourage her to speak in English yet. You know, we don't need to worry about English. But our mother language is important to, to be able to communicate with the grandparents in Taiwan and Japan. I think this is the best school we found. Just like Sayaka, many other children have developed confidence through bilingual learning, and the character cultivation helps them experience the joy of growing up. On Sunday, she would ask me, Mommy, are we going to school tomorrow? I was thinking that maybe she didn't want to go to school. But I'd say, yes, we have to go to Tsuji Preschool for classes. She would say, yay, I want to go back to school. It's so much fun being with the other kids. In the earlier character building classes at Tsuji, the first thing they teach the three-year-olds is to care for themselves. This teaches a sense of responsibility. Putting away their own dishes, making their own bed at nap time, working with the other children, and sleeping peacefully to allow their bodies to have ample rest are all ways of learning to treat their bodies well. 
This is a lesson on responsibility. When I was a volunteer, I heard many conversations that the teachers had on their breaks. Most of it was about how to guide the children, what misbehaviors they had noticed, and discussions on how to guide the children. They are very serious about the topic. Instead of talking about their personal lives over break, these teachers spend all of their thoughts on trying to guide and counsel the children. So I feel that these teachers are very caring. The love these teachers have has put the parents' minds at ease and have inspired them. The good life habits formed in the character cultivation classes have also slowly been taken back to the families. When we are eating meal, uh, she always tell me, oh, don't talk. When we start to talk, she told me, oh, mama, don't talk when you're eating. And then she translated to my husband. Oh, don't talk when you're eating in Chinese. Yeah. It's like a yeah, interpreter, the same topic. Yeah. When, when they communicate in Chinese, she look at me and then she say the same thing in Japanese to me. Little Sayaka is well on her way to becoming the family interpreter thanks to her mom's support at school as a parent volunteer. In fact, there's been consistent evidence on the positive impact of parental involvement and student academic performance regardless of their income or background. Principal Jin, I believe you actually started out as a volunteer dad at Tiji Academy. How come? How did this happen? Well, as a volunteer, uh, the first the step we, I step into uh, Suji Academy mm -hmm. because my daughters enrolled in Suji Academy. And I always wanted to be a volunteer. Mm -hmm. And this volunteer dad position just came right fit to me. So I gladly accept the role. And I ever since uh, enjoy it a lot and never regret. Mm. But you could have just been a volunteer dad, yet you volunteer to teach the older people IT classes. How come you took on this position? Well, I believe that everyone in this, uh, this modern age should learn some kind of computer skills, mm -hmm. especially older people. Right. So one day, one of the commissioner came to me to ask me if I can give a listen to our elder volunteers. Mm -hmm. I gladly accept the role. And today, I must say, I did a great job because some of the volunteers at their ages 70s still using their computers to check their emails, browsing Suji news online mm -hmm. on a daily basis. That was amazing to me. And they uh, really, really enriched their life. You could have also stopped there. However, you decided to be the volunteer principal of Tiji Academy. What made you take on that position? Principal is never in, in my plan. Mm -hmm. Okay, I never thought of being a principal. But it's just this sense of uh, responsibility just fell onto my shoulder. And I feel, you know, maybe I can take the challenge. And I glad, gladly accept the role. And today I'm very thankful that so many people mm -hmm. supported me in the back. So school is running very well now. Well, a child also, when they see their parents heavily involved in school, they also realize that education is very important. So we're going to take a break to the second segment. Okay. okay. And go meet the volunteer moms and the students of Tiji Great Love Preschool. <laughs> When my child first came to the school, I had thought about helping out, but I found out that the workload for a Tsuji teacher is actually quite heavy, 
Preparing for class often requires extra work at home, especially in arts and crafts. I think this is hard work, so I just try to contribute a little to help the teachers. There are many volunteer parents like Pei who use their free time after sending their children to school to design arts and crafts for the classes. So in every semester, we see the new volunteer parents gather to make props for different festivals, such as the flower arrangement classes and making red envelopes for Chinese New Year. From a group of strangers, these volunteer parents build a team working together for their children. Wow. We have to spend the new year as a family in Siji. I'm thankful to have all of our fellow volunteers, teachers, and students at this festive time. Almost all of the parents came. Our volunteer parents made all of the red envelopes here. And they're now a small team, giving love at this special time of the year. Because of these diligent volunteer parents designing events for Chinese New Year, the children in the United States get to experience the rich Asian culture despite being so far away. For the letters, we build a support with cardboard so it looks 3D after we stick the words on. Recycling unused cardboard to make the auspicious big red envelope and a game of packaging paper were also the parents' ideas. To give American children a chance to experience the Chinese traditional culture, Taiwanese volunteer parent Pei has lent her daughter's traditional Chinese gown for Sayaka to wear. This looks really special for me, you know, I'm Japanese, so I don't, I didn't prepare this. My daughter just saw and they're happy to wear. Uh, she said, oh, I can't wait. Although there's a difference in cultural backgrounds among the volunteer parents, they share the same loving heart, as well as a desire to give. From one volunteer parent to this team of parents, we see how one idea came to fruition with everyone's support, creating this unforgettable experience. Tiji's Da'ai Preschool in the U.S. is unique because there is a team of volunteer parents working in the background, focusing on passing down culture and supporting the bilingual and character education classes. I am very happy. It's so much fun talking to everyone about the school and the children. I am also happy to be working with the other volunteer parents. It's very laid back here. One reason was I want to be with my daughter. <laughs> and then I want to see how my daughter uh, do at do at school. If you are doing volunteer work, I can, you know, anytime you can run to the classroom from the, you know, from the outside of the door, I can see her. Many volunteer parents dedicate only a little of their time, but when accumulated, much time is volunteered. This is how one thought of kindness begins to grow. I don't work, so I have my extra time. A lot of mom helps too, so why not? <laughs> Seeing the seed of kindness planted in her daughter's heart inspires Toshiko. Seeing how her daughter's character and Chinese have improved, Toshiko now hopes that her daughter will get to learn about her own Japanese culture. Looks like you know Chinese is more getting more strong, getting stronger um, for her nowadays. Hopefully, I can schedule some play day with the Japanese moms or kids. Mm, but it's not easy. It's not, it's not really easy to maintain the relationships. Parents have many expectations as their children grow up. For a child growing up in an immigrant family, he or she is not just learning what a typical child learns. They also need to learn one or more two languages and continue the cultural tradition of their families. March 3rd is a day, the girls' day in Japan. We celebrate the girls' uh, development, the growth. Uh, so we set the very pretty dolls, old style dolls, Japanese dolls at home uh, for two weeks display. 
So I'm going to start doing at the end of uh, the big in the middle of February uh, for my daughter to just you know, appreciate uh, the dolls. Um, that is a gift from the from her grandparents, Japanese grandparents. <laughs> Emperor, emperors, like wedding, wedding style, wedding ceremony style. Usually Japanese girl get to receive this doll uh, when they are born. Then usually from grandma, grandparents. And then this doll will receive some kind of misfortune or um, bad luck or like bad thing that might happen to my kids, to the kids. But that doll will supposed to receive the misfortune instead of them receive. The doll set for the girls' festival is a blessing given by her grandparents. In addition to carrying the grandparents' love and prayers, the gift also symbolizes a deep hope for her to learn their traditions. As time go by, Sayaka must adapt to the English environment in the United States, as well as learn about her parents' Asian cultures. English, Chinese, and Japanese language studies are just the beginning of her life. She has many more cultures to explore in this world, no matter how many obstacles the future brings. With the love and support of her family, Sayaka will overcome them with a bright smile on her face. Welcome back. So, Principal Jin, when you look back to the time and effort you put into your children's language education, do you think it paid off? Yes, it definitely paid off. And how so? And what well, ways? both of my uh, daughters had graduated from Suji Academy. And because of this uh, special education, the character education, mm -hmm. what they have learned from this school, they know more about how to help people. And then they follow this Suji path right now and become Tsisao and now, both of them are Chings, so I am very proud of them. Then, from a principal's position, have you had a parent come to you to tell them the, the development they've seen from attending Tiji Academy in their child? Yes, always. Every year, we have parents come to me mm -hmm. uh, to thank me for Tiji, give their children such good education. What they have learned in Tiji Academy, one of the greater part being the filial of piety showing respect to elders in action. One particular example I can give you is uh, during the graduation ceremony, mm -hmm. we have the kids present a cup of tea to their parents. Oh, okay. So it's a very touching moment. Then, so I guess besides learning Chinese language, they also learned the cultural aspect as well. Yes. And then as a principal for you to see that, it must have been very rewarding as well. Oh yes, okay. definitely. Well, Principal Jin, we really thank you for being here today. Thank you, Jinjie. It's my pleasure to be here today. And for those of you at home, I hope you enjoyed our show today, and I'll see you soon. It's a very interesting show. I, I, I do enjoy learning about what Zuti is doing around the U.S. and around the world. It gives me a greater appreciation for what Zuti, Zuti does for people. They're different from the other TV shows that I've watched because they explain different things about how when different people contribute, you can accomplish a big task. What 360 means to me is it actually gives you know, me a glimpse into what Suchi is doing and I can understand it better um, and then it motivates me more to, to want to help.